Hi, uh, we're going to be looking at the age of Jefferson from 1800 to 1815, the Western Expansion and manis Manifest Destiny. So remember, the fed we had two political parties. We have a star of the political parties. George Washington didn't believe in them, so after he's our only president that didn't belong to a political party. But after him, we're going to have the Federalists that was led by Alexander Hamilton, and the Democrat Republicans that was led by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. And remember, James Madison is known as the father of the Constitution. He did a lot of the writing. He did the Virginia Plan on issues such as the role of central government and what kind of economy the United States would have. John Adams, our second president, had an unpopular, uh, unpopular presidency. As it appeared, Federalists were losing control. He faced Thomas Jefferson, his vice president, in the 1800 election. So the election of 1800, electors cast their vote for two candidates, but they did not distinguish between president and vice president of who they wanted. So Jefferson and running mate Aaron Burr each received 73 votes and Adams only received 65, so he lost. And during this time period, the president and vice president ran on different tickets. They didn't run together like Donald Trump and Pence ran together. Um, Hillary Clinton and her running mate run, um, ran together. So whoever wins for president, their vice president also wins. But during this time period, um, the president and vice president ran on separate tickets. So that will change. To break the tie, the vote was sent to the House of Representatives, which is Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution states that's what would have happened. So the winner needs support of a majority of 9 of 16 states, because right now we have a total of 16 states, so you need 9 of those. While Federalists despised Jefferson, some, especially Hamilton, hated Burr more. Eventually, Jefferson received support of 10 states and become president. Did he make a deal? Uh, we're not too sure, but he will become our third president. So going forward, to prevent a tie in the future, Congress passed the 12th Amendment, which required electors to cast a vote for president and vice president. Like They have to distinguish. So Jefferson was a Republican, but that doesn't mean he believed the central government shouldn't demonstrate power and authority. And remember, every time you see central government, we're talking about federal government. Uh, our third branch of government is the Supreme Court. Marbury v. Madison is a very important Supreme Court case that will finally show the third branch power. Before leaving office, President John Adams appointed Federalists to government positions. Some appointment papers were not delivered before Jefferson took office. Jefferson told his Secretary of State, James Madison, not to deliver the appointment papers. William Marbury sued to have the papers delivered. Because now we have a new president. He was like, Adams is no longer president, so I don't have to accept his appointments. William Marbury was one of those appointments. He was upset, so he sued. So it's going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And so the Supreme Court, Justice John Marshall, agreed that Marbury deserved his appointment. He did say, you know, I agree with that. However, it was unconstitutional for the Supreme Court to first the force the president to deliver the appointment. This was the law at the time. So although he agreed that he should have got his appointment, he looked at the Constitution and said, look, we can't do nothing. It's not constitutional. It violates the Constitution. So this decision established what is called judicial review. The process of the judicial branch, the Supreme Court having the final say over the actions and laws of the executive and legislative branch. So it shows their power just as much as the executive and legislative branch. They have the final say-so, that final word. And this just shows you Marbury v. Madison, and then, of course, Brown v. Board of Education, a very important Supreme Court case that ended segregation in schools in 1954. So Jefferson is going to be responsible for the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson learned that France had acquired the territory of Louisiana from Spain. It was important to possess New Orleans. Its owner would largely control trade on the Mississippi and access to the Gulf of Mexico. 
Napoleon was busy enlarging his empire in Europe. It was expensive to defend lands in North America. He was willing to not only sell New Orleans, but the entire territory. Um, the U.S. negotiates a treaty giving the U.S. the entire territory for $15 million. It was only three cents an acre. It was very cheap. We, we were able to double the size of the United States and not spend a lot of money doing so. And that shows you the territory. So, U.S. doubles its size with one deal. Jefferson thought the deal might be unconstitutional. His men negotiated and signed the treaty, not the Senate. So he considered proposing an amendment to authorize the purchase. In the end, an amendment would take too long. The Senate didn't think it was necessary, and they approved the deal. Once we bought that land, um, Jefferson wanted to explore it and map it out. So he um, gets Lewis and Clark, Meriwether Lewis, Jefferson's secretary, is chosen to lead an expedition across the Louisiana Territory. He chose Fran William Carr, Clark to help him lead the Corps of Discovery in an attempt to find a water route to the Pacific and strengthen American claims in the Northwest. Encountering, encountering hardships, the explorers navigated various terrains, learning about the environment as they went. At the end of Thomas Jefferson, you're going to have our fourth president, which is James Madison. Jefferson's close friend and ally, James Madison, is elected president in 1808. France and Britain were at war with each other. The United States attempted to remain neutral in the conflict, meaning they didn't want to get involved. They wanted to stay out of it. Trouble brewing with the Britain, however. Neutrality proved difficult. Both French and British plunder American ships to help their war effort. The British impress American soldiers, basically forced them to serve on British ships. Jefferson supported the and, and Congress passed an embargo, which embargo is something that restricted trade with both France and England. This is going to cause the War of 1812. The belief that Britain was interfering with the American trade, impressing her sailors and agitating Native American tribes, led to the United States declaring war on Great Britain in 1812. So we're already in another war with Britain. We had the American Revolution where we fought for our independence, and now we're fighting with Britain with the War of 1812. Early in the war, Britain focused most of her attention on France. The American Navy USS Constitution won surprising early victories. However, after Napoleon was defeated, Britain focused its attention on North America. Soldiers marched into Washington, D.C., forcing Madison and other officials to flee. They burnt basically the White House down. They burnt it down. Britain also attacked Fort McHenry in Baltimore. And this is where the Star Spangled Banner is going to be written. So looking at the battles of New Orleans. In New Orleans, Americans led by Andrew Jackson prepared to defend the city from British invaders. Jackson and his men beat the British, making Jackson a hero, even though British and American diplomats had ended the war. Um, and Jackson will later become a president too because of his notoriety from this war. The legacy of the war. The Treaty of Ghent ended the war and there was no territory, no territory exchanged hands. The Americans, however, they gained confidence and patriotism began to industrialize the americans could not depend on british goods so they was like look we need to industrialize and get ourselves going and that is the end